Wow, welcome everyone. Today we have a new planning guide for last epoch with Warlock. So in this video, what I wanted to do is I want to play Warlock as my starting class. And here I have written some of the notes for myself after looking at multiple guides with early leveling, mid game and also late game with Warlock. I have even drafted some plans myself as well. And you can see there's a little bit of research I've done before the release of the patch. And yes, as the patch gets released, we'll be updating this build with different items and after more testing. So coming over to a guide over here. I have been learning from Action RPG, Grimoire Gaming, and also the Curse over here. And I have the links available if you guys want to, have, want to have a look. So right away, as you guys plan to level Warlock, what I want to do is, before we jump into level 1 to 50 and also go beyond, let's come over to some of the builder's guide and I'll briefly run through to you guys what makes Warlock build unique and what is the biggest highlight for Warlock for me with automatically casting spells and also getting tons of narcotic resistance for more damage and also more defensive capacities. So if we come over to the skill tree, we'll briefly summarize the Warlock combination or the skill rotation. The Chaotic Rapture over here allows us to automatically cast Chaos Bots. And having the ability to cast Chaos Bots automatically, we can also cast Chaos Bots manually. Chaos Bots will also in return automatically cast Rip Blood with higher intelligence, and also Chaos Bots will also automatically cast Bone Curse onto Curse enemies, which allows us to automatically cast multiple spells with one spell. And this is the biggest highlight with the cathartic feature with the Warlock combination. So the spells you see over here, most of them are automatically casted. We can use Perfane Veil for more protectiveness and also more defenders, defensiveness. Or in return, we can be using Ghost Flame over here to deal a little more damage. And this is multiple alternatives I'll provide to you guys. So now knowing that we can be automatically casting multiple spells with one spell, with the Fissure, the next thing we want to focus on for the Warlock build is that we'll be gaining a lot of ward per second with uncapped narcotic resistance. And this is the same combination with all the builds that you can see with the Warlock build because we'll be getting this to like 1200, 700, and here I try to get to around 900 with uncapped narcotic resistance. This both boost our damage and also our defensive capacity. Again, this comes back to the cathartic fissure, which with uncapped narcotic resistance will be gaining more damage because of this. So one of the centerpiece of the gears we're looking for is gonna be the bone climber but the bone climber helmet. <laughs> and for this helmet, I was thinking that if I don't get it, I'm happy enough to get the blessing for the helmet drop rate to even have a higher chance of getting this helmet and also getting higher legendary potential. If we could get intelligence and also narcotic resistance on this helmet, it's even better. Oh yeah, I made a little mistake. It can't be both tier 7 one. One of them is tier 7, one of them is tier 5. Now finally, for the Warlock build, you can see there's a multiple variation of it with lower health but higher ward retention with more dodge rate and also more armor or the alternative with high HP but lower other defensive capacities. So here I have made myself a personal builder that I want to try with Warlock and this is my current build. I have those links of build available for you guys with a side note of the highlight of each of the Warlock build. So coming over to our notes over here. For level 1 to level 50 for the level ambient build of the Warlock, I think this particular builder guy will be helpful. You can see most of the gears are rare or even magic. And the progression of the gear stats for me will be damage over time, movement, resistance, so I'm a little defensive, getting some narcotic damage and also resistance. And as for the idols for level 1 to level 50, anything that boosts more damage and also more defensive capacities, that is fine. Now one thing I do want to highlight for leveling, I do like to having a transplant or a blink as one of her spells. So coming over to a leveler build from the curse. Over here you can see a brief summary of the leveler build, including the skill trees and also passives. Now because I think leveling will be pretty straightforward, so I decided to follow his build as well once the game's released. One big highlight for me is having transplant and also having ability to be auto-casting some of my spells once I get my chaotic cathartic fissure up to high enough levels. And you can see for most of the gears, you want some movement speed, resistance, some damage. 
So the leveling for Warlock should be quite straightforward, as you stack some narcotic damage and also some narcotic resistance for the potential of finding this unique helmet to give you build tons of damage and also defensiveness once you get to the mid game. So on the topic of the mid game, over here we'll be focused on finding this particular unique helmet and this is the biggest part of the game. Now in order to farm this particular unique helmet, we can be target farming for the Echo for the Black Sun, which drops the unique or set for helmets. So this is one of the focus that we really want for this particular build. And this will be one of my focus from level 50 to level 85 as I start to farm for the Echoes. During this time, I'll be getting my idols for narcotic resistance, any resistance, so I'm more defensive, any HP and also any damage over time will be great at this time. Now around this time, I'll have enough high skill levels to be auto-casting most of my spells, as I mentioned at the start. So Cathartic Fissures will be auto-casting Chaos Bots, and Chaos Bot will auto-cast Bone Curse and also auto-casting Rip Blood which allows us to save tons of time and also save tons of button clicking as we farm through the game. And also around this time, I am still keeping Transplant and I do want to keep Transplant because I can be auto-casting spells. I can be traveling faster in the Echoes and also farming my dungeons because I can blink and run, and this is my personal preference. Now finally, as we come to level 85 to level 100, as we start to look into gearing up for the end game gears, we can slowly craft some of the legendaries into. We can slowly craft some of the unique items into legendaries. Over here, I try to have multiple unique items for my build. But as you can see, with some of the other builds I'm sharing with you guys, you can have less unique items or less legendaries. And this is a personal preference. For me, having an endgame item to be farming and also getting higher stats with legendary potential, it's quite unique and also quite interesting for last epoch. So one of my focus after level 90 will be trying to get some tier 7 FXs and also having some tier 6 or tier 7 with intelligence or narcotic resistance to be crafting onto my legendary gears. Around this time, I really want to stack up for narcotic resistance, damage over time and also HP for those idols. Now one thing I noticed with multiple warlock build is that most of us will have transplant as a way of traveling across the map. While well, during this time, we'll be auto-casting the Chaos Bolts through the Cathartic Fissures. Now, it is a personal preference, guys, if you want to be manually casting Rip Blood or if you want to manually be casting Chaos Bolts. For me over here, after comparing multiple builds, I decided to be casting Chaos Bolts also manually while auto-casting with my Cathartic Fissure. And this means I will be auto-casting my Rip Blood found the passives with the from the passives over here by scaling higher intelligence. Now hopefully this is short enough summary for my plans for Warlock from level 1 to level 50 and also onwards. What I'll do now is I'll be working on a loot filter for the Warlock and once that is available I'll also share that with you guys. So this way once the season starts I'll be working on Warlock as my starter class and hopefully this will be a class to help me farm for in-game items and also for different builds.